In this video, we'll be overclocking the Ryzen 9 5950X all the way up to 5117 MHz using the EK Quantum MSI MPG X570S Carbon EKX motherboard. I'll speed run you through the BIOS settings and give you a couple of tips and notes along the way. Please note that this is for entertainment purposes only and not meant as an actual guide. So please don't just outright copy the settings that I'm showing in this video and apply them to your system. If you want to know how to actually overclock this system, please have a look at the longer Scatterbencher video. All right, we have a lot of ground to cover, so let's get into it. When you've entered the BIOS, press F7 to switch to advanced mode. Then go to the OC menu. Immediately enter the advanced CPU configuration menu. Then enter the AMD overclocking submenu. Here's where we'll do most of the grunt work by tuning Precision Boost Overdrive. Set Precision Boost Overdrive to Advanced and set PBO limits to Manual. Set PPT limit to 1000, TDC limit to 500 and EDC limit to 500. This increases the power, thermal and current headroom of our motherboard VRM. Set Precision Boost Overdrive Scaler to Manual and 10x. This tricks the PBO algorithm into thinking our CPU is much better than it actually is so it will push for higher voltages. Set max CPU boost clock override to 200 MHz. This increases the frequency ceiling by 200 MHz over the program max 1T boost limit. On the 5950X, that's 5025 MHz, even though the listed boost max frequency is 4900 MHz. Adding 200 MHz results in a ceiling of 5225 MHz. Enter the Curve Optimizer submenu and set Curve Optimizer to per core. Here's where the real magic happens as Curve Optimizer allows us to adjust the VF curve for each core by up to 30 steps of 3 to 5 millivolt. Setting a negative curve means the CPU will use less voltage for a given frequency. That in turn results in lower power, thermal and current. This in turn gives more headroom for setting higher voltage and that, well, that gives us higher frequencies. I tested each core individually to find what's the best curve optimizer setting. Set core 0 to core 15 optimizer sign to negative. Set core 1 to curve optimizer magnitude to 4. Set core 3 curve optimizer magnitude to 11. Set core 10, core 13 and core 14 curve optimizer magnitude to 20. Set core 15 curve optimizer magnitude to 10. Set curve optimizer magnitude for all remaining cores to 26. Leave the Curve Optimizer submenu and set LCLK DPM Enhanced PCIe Detection to Disabled. This helped me get a more stable system when increasing the reference clock frequency later on. Leave the Advanced CPU Configuration submenu. Set FCH Base Clock MHz to 101.3125. This will increase our Precision Boost algorithm frequencies by about 1.3%. So, if the algorithm sets 5000 MHz, the actual frequency will be 5066 MHz. Or, in our case, the maximum boost frequency ceiling goes up from 5225 MHz to 5294 MHz. Set AXMP to Profile 1. This will make the memory run at DDR4 4266, but also runs Infinity Fabric in asynchronous mode. However, since we've increased the reference clock to 101.3125, our memory will run at DDR4 4322. Set memory triad to DDR4 4400 18 22 22 22 42 F clock 1800 MHz. This optimizes our memory even further by increasing the frequency to DDR4 4458, 4400 adjusted by our reference clock of 101.3125 and adjusting the primary memory timings from 19 19 19 39 to 18 22 22 22 42. Enter the digit all power submenu. Set CPU load line calibration control to mode three, just to make sure we get a better grip on the actual voltage when using curve optimizer. Leave the digit all power submenu. Set CPU core voltage to offset mode, then set CPU offset mode mark to plus and CPU offset voltage to 0.0625 volt. This gives another 62.5 millivolts offset over the precision boost voltage. So if the precision boost is 1.4 volt, we'll get 1.4625 volt. Then save and exit the BIOS. To make sure everything is working as intended, we rerun some benchmarks and check the performance increase compared to the default settings. Higher is better and all our benchmark scores are higher. When running Prime95 small FFTs with AVX enabled, the average effective CPU clock is 3901 MHz with 1.197 volts. 
The average CPU temperature is 90 degrees Celsius and the average VRM temperature is 70 degrees Celsius. The average CPU package power is 257 watts. When running Prime95 small FETs with AVX disabled, the average effective CPU clock is 4053 MHz with 1.242 volts. The average CPU temperature is 86 degrees Celsius and the average VRM temperature is 66 degrees Celsius. The average CPU package power is 248 watts. The highest core clock reported in the operating system is 5117 MHz for Core 2. The average effective clock in single-threaded applications across all cores is 4910 MHz. Alright, that's it. Thanks for watching and till the next time.